products that was used on the SAT. These are So the first question is a business office is rented for $1,000 per month. The rent increases by 20% each year. How much rent will the renters pay at the end of three years for the office space? So for people who can add quickly, you know, like if you're at 1,000 one year, you're at 1,000 the next year, you know that you're always paying your base level of 1,000. So if your base level is $1,000 and you're doing three years, you pretty much know that it's got to be 3000 or so because your base rent doesn't change. See, and here's the thing. There's only one question that is close to 3000 and it's a little bit over, but for people who like exactness, it's just a matter of averaging percentages. You know it's not 2000 because that's two years, but see, there's interest. So there's interest on the second year, so it couldn't be. And your interest second year would be this number, uh, except for you have to add 20% each year. So that's kind of out. So go on ahead and start doing the process of elimination, and then you only have two left. To how we can break this down. The first year has been given to you. It's year one. It's 1,000. Keep that. Step two, take year one and add 20% to it. You know that 10% is $100, so therefore 20% must be $200. And you can do this in your mind, or you can go over here, play around, and go 1,000 times 10. A lot of times, if you know already how to do simple math, or if you need a refresher for a couple of you guys who took a couple of months out, you know that you increase. 10 times 10 gives you 100. 100 times 10 gives you 1,000. So every time you take off a 10 as a unit, you're going to lose a zero. So you think the same thing when you're dealing with 20s. Okay? So this would be 200, so that's second year. Okay, keep in mind, this question asks you, will the renters pay at the end of three years. So that's everything. That's going to be this 20% plus what they pay each year. Okay, so you've got two things to add. So year one was given to you. Uh, you have all the other years, 1,000, 1,200, and you took 1,000 and two and added another 20% to you, and that would have been year two. So now when you add them out, you get 3060 And if you remember that I did say on the first slide that it had the answer had to be somewhere over 3000 or somewhere around 3000 because you're adding three years of 1000 and then the interest, and this is what you do. A lot of people are tempted to just do 20% and go, it's 200 and if you really think about it, you could also do 1000 each year, and you go, that would be 3000 because you add, and then you could even add the interest separately. It's what a lot of people do when they're trying to find the interest amounts they have at the bank. They, they compound it by the base rate, and then they go ahead and they add 200 here and 200 each year. You could have done it that way. Problem is that that doesn't always work when you have something like 15% where you have these odd numbers like, you know, um, 3,650. That's going to get more complicated when you start doing this. But if you had done $200, you would have gotten your 600. And then you just add that on to 3,000. And then you would have known it was 3,600. Let's now go over answer choices. Guess what? Uh, there's always going to be a distractor. Okay, this one's pretty easy. This is easy. B, choice B is easy to eliminate. But like when you look at these other ones, these are distractions. Because then you go, well, wait a minute. 
is it 1,000 this and that, you know, 2,000 is a distractor. And then you start thinking with the interest, do they just pay this? So this was fairly easy. Maybe on the SAT, they might do this at 3,004, and that complicates things. Then you have to go ahead and do your answers. But this one was pretty straightforward. So again, whoops, sorry. Answer was C, 3,600. Okay, for the next question, these, these get very intimidating, but this is what we need to do to look at them. The average of a list of five numbers is Y. Please look at a list of five numbers. Y is your variable. You can change terms, you can change it to N or Z, probably on the SAT, they most likely use, these are the, they use N as the variable, because N would represent a number, but it doesn't matter what the variable is. So, you go ahead. Okay, and you start thinking about it. When an additional number is added to the list, the average of all six numbers is y plus 3. Which of the following is value in terms of y as a number? So now we're talking about in terms of y. So these could be, this could be a formula for all your numbers. This is the first number. This would be the second number. Um, this would be the third number here. And this would be the fourth number and the fifth. But all of these numbers have to average. Okay, not a sum, but an average. So you've got to do two things here. you probably got to think of a sum and an average. Okay, so here are your choices. Sub so two, choose a value for y. Select a random value. Why am I working with a number like 10? Because 10 keeps things in a base like you guys learn in base 10 numbers. So 10 plus 3 is the first number. And because it went here, y plus 3. The average of all these numbers is going to be whatever this is, which is 13. So when you add all those numbers together, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, and y6 together, they're all going to equal this average. This number here, they're going to average. But that's not what the question is asking you. It's asking you which of the following is the value in terms of y of the number added to the list. So it's asking you, like, how could we find out? What this is really saying is how could we find out what the sixth number is by using one of these formulas. So you see how they turn the language around on you? So pay attention for what they're saying and look for this. I'm sure you guys do this in your math classes. In terms of why. In terms of why. In terms of why. What's the value? Okay. Let's keep going. See if we can't find it. and we go to step three, we chose a value for y. Now we selected a random value. Now look, if we had five numbers, the average of those numbers would be a formula of y times five. Okay, see how you don't have that here? Okay, so that's five numbers. Okay, but guess what? It's asking you for six. So y times six is our number. Why are we bothering with this y times 5? We are bothering with this y times 5 for the simple fact that because we started here at 5 numbers is y. That was the average. So y times 5 is 50, but it's only 5 numbers. So we have to go and do another step. Okay, this is your next step. If you had the number here and you want to get an average, you have the sixth term. 13 times 6 is 78. Okay, 
3 times 6 is 18, so 8. Carry my 1. 6 times 1 is 6, and then here's a 7, and there's a 78. Okay, so we have 78 for all your numbers. All six numbers. The first five, if you average, you get 50. When you add that six number to it, it's going to be 78. Why is there such a jump? We're talking about averages, guys. We're talking about averages because averages allow you to add 2 to 20 and get some kind of medium average in there. So don't think too hard. Okay. And what we find is our entire average of six numbers with 78 minus the value of the first five numbers was 50. Why are we subtracting these two? Because we have to find out what the sum is. And here's the thing. Subtracting is the inverse of adding. And since you have adding, you need to subtract here to find out how you're going to get the what, what this would be and what the average would be. So this is equal to the, the average of six numbers, and this is equal to the average of this 50 is equal to the average of, of five numbers. So we took what we were originally given as 50, and then we did we subtracted it from 78, and we got 28. And just to make sure I didn't mess that up, I'm going to go on ahead and do 70 minus 50. And certainly 8 minus 0 is 8. And 7 minus 5 is 2. It's 28. So now we're still not done. This is a long-winded problem. We need to start with what our original number was, which is 10. And we need to add how much to it? Why are we adding 18? Because that's a number that gives you 28. It is so many steps to this problem. You cannot mess it up. But guess what? 28 times the original number to get it is going to be C. And that's your answer. This was taken from a real SAT from about two years ago. So guess what? Answer is y plus 18 because it said in terms of y, the number added to the list is what? S let's go over these. 6y was meant to throw you off, so you scratch it out because everybody knows if you have five numbers and we did 6y. 6y means, hey, 6y, I'm going to find my numbers. I'm going to go 6y equals something. It does not give you this nice little word here called an average. 6y plus 18. That's going to give you too much. So try to think of what you're doing and see if you're adding. You started with 13 and this. Y plus 14, this choice D, is just a distractor. Okay, it's meant to, like, throw you off if you run out of time and you get upset. Those were just two problems tonight. Thank you so much for walking, and SAT is next month. Good luck for all you guys who are taking it. Have a good night.